Apparently, there's been a hack on Curve Finance. And before we get into the particulars about what exactly has happened, I want everybody to know this is a breaking story. And uh, the data and the information that will come out uh, will hit us pretty heavy. So we'll see what it is. But this is the information that we have as it is right now. So I really wasn't going to do a video today, but uh, just rolling around, checking the portfolio and just seeing how things were going as far as the basic crypto landscape. And I saw that uh, Curve Dow, which is ranked roughly yeah, 77th, was down almost 14%. I found it odd because nothing really has, uh, has been declining that fast. And you can see that over the last seven days. It's been pretty stable, actually. Around 70 cents, somewhere around there, 72. Then all of a sudden, it just took a big nosedive. I'm like, well, that's quite interesting. And then uh, a friend of the show sent me this uh, article, which just broke uh, an hour and a half ago. Curve Finance Exploit puts $100 million worth of crypto at risk. CRV token tumbles. I want you to be aware of what it says here. At risk. However... Apparently, $41 million is already gone. So this is what we have. So Curve, Stablecoin Exchange, has been the victim of an, of an exploit according to a tweet from the project itself. So, so this isn't just some guy who knows a guy who heard from somebody. This is what we have. So it says states the number of stable pools using Viper 0.2.15 has been exploited as a result of a malfunctioning re-entrancy lock. We are assessing the situation. We'll update the community as things develop. Other pools are safe, which, you know, I, I'm not going to say much about that, but uh, it is nice and reassuring when someone says, you know, but don't worry, your funds are safe, <laughs> which is exactly, I, I shouldn't laugh, but it's exactly what a lot of these different places have said. FTX, Voyager, Celsius, don't worry, but your funds are safe. So we'll take it with a grain of salt. Let's dig into the facts. So upwards of $100 million worth of crypto were at risk due to a re-entry bug in Viper. Several stablecoin pools in the platform used for pricing liquidity on a number of different DeFi services have been drained by hackers so far. It's unclear how much has been drained from Curve totally, but BlockSec, a blockchain auditing firm, estimates a total loss above $42 million in a preliminary analysis. And where they got this, you can just see right here, I had to take a, this little dig here, in a Twitter, and they said, look, here's the updated sheets. Looks like hackers have already taken $41 million. So again, this is what we know will be an evolving story. However, going on this vein about what it talks about here, which seems pretty bad, let's be honest, but if you scroll up into the, into the Twitter history, and it talks about, Please note this reentry is associated with the use of use ETH, which could potentially place the wrapped ETH related pools in jeopardy. Please DM, DMS if you need help. But then it said another 14 million has been lost. But it states here this attacker, a 14 million, is funded from Binance. And they ask, is this a white hat procedure? Are they trying to recover funds? Please check it at CZ Binance. And there's really been uh, no response to this one. But uh, just because things have been moved or have been uh, drained doesn't mean that they're actually gone. Perhaps it was Curve Finance or Binance working with Curve Finance to recover funds automatically. I don't know. This is just the information that I have. Finally, the highest destabilized trading markets for Curve DAOs, Curve DAOs, native CRV tokens, which was down 70%. And this is the interesting part. That price action threatened to compound the chaos by potentially forcing a liquidation on the founder of Curve's 70 million borrowing position on Aave. So again, it seems like it's not just, just one instance of where this could affect things. There's always a domino effect and we'll see how it goes. But if we dig even deeper, here's the Curve website. And I tried to look back on Wayback Time Machine as far as like the currency reserves, but it looks like these guys are always spinning, so I'm not for sure. However, if you go over here and check to see if, they're, if you can substitute DAI for USDC, it looks like the pairs are, are still stable in this situation. USDT, USDC. But again, I think this is wrapped ETH, not having to do with stable coins itself. Here is the official uh, Twitter account for Curve Finance, and this is exactly what we took a look at. And it states, if you use these Viper versions and unsure if you're affected, contact this person right here. I'll link this in the description if this is you. To be clear, the dangerous combination was the effective Viper version and using pure ETH. Uh, in addition, 
CRV, USD contracts, any pool with it are also not affected. Again, I think it's just wrapped ETH. And then Banteg says, we did a, a looky-loo, and it looks like CRV ETH pool drained minutes before a white hack operation. So apparently somebody knew about it, and it wasn't just the hackers. Uh, it looks like they got ahead of the people that were supposed to safeguard this. And then it is as said here, use that to remove from ETH site. If you're in a uh, liquidity provider in CRV ETH pool, you can withdraw the remaining ETH using command remove liquidity one coin. Look, I don't do any of this stuff. I'll be honest with you. I don't delve into the farming and putting on a curve and yielding. I, I just don't do it. But I understand it's a great project. It's just right now, you have to understand that we're in the early days and this is bound to happen again and again and again. Hopefully it all gets worked out. And maybe all this information that we have is will be updated and they'll say, no, 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 everything's fine. I'm just giving the information that I have right now. So that's what we have as far as the hack. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Never great when we hear these things, but it is the price of admission to get to the bull run. All right. How about some good news today? Would you like some good news? I sure would. How about this? This is from a friend of the show, Simon Dixon. And this is on the Celsius debacle, which was a hell of a Ponzi scheme. And he states, uh, okay, we finally have the complete picture for Celsius chapter 11 exit plan. So looks like they're going to be getting out of chapter 11 and going into something of some, what would be called sustainable. And what I like about this is liquidation. I'll just be honest with you. Simon states, the, num the numbers are now very similar to the Bank of the Future modeling and later Celsius disclosure. After a year of arguing, we have what we need for the Bitcoin mining valuation assumptions. End result, this is where Celsius got into crypto mining, which they don't know what, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say if they knew or didn't know what they were doing, but whatever. Mining valued at 565 million to 424 million with a wind down enterprise of 88 million. So what this is, is essentially this mining operation, it was valued at 565 million. And now it's valued at 88 million. I, I got to tell you, I, I, I know a couple miners and unless you know what you're doing, don't get into mining. It's a tough business now. It was pretty cool back in 2012, 2013. You know, we can just have a graphics card. You were good. Now you're competing against a lot of bigger people. I mean, you may be profitable in it. I'm just telling you, the, the, everybody I know that, that's in Bitcoin mining is losing their shirt. That's just how I see it. Unless you're somebody big, you know, like uh, Marathon or something like that. Anyhow, so this is the, the three different types of plans. Again, exiting from Chapter 11. This looks good to me. I mean, not great. It's not like it's going to give us 100% back of money. But I want you to know that the, the new co-plan, the new company that they're, they're, they're supposed to bring about, you can get into that. And there's different, there's, there's different partitions of that. If you are in, in uh, earn or if you're in custody or if you're in some other segment of, of, uh, of Celsius. So just be aware that it's different for everybody. But most of the people here are were in earn, where you stuck your crypto in there, you hope to gain yield, and that's where the people got screwed the most. This is the one that'll help the most. So the new co plan is this is the gross liquid crypto. This is in millions. So you're looking at $2.6 billion. All right, not bad. So for the new co, you got 2.6, an orderly wind down. Well, they just pretty much like, you know, started liquidating things, but in a, in a, uh, in a, in a systemic way. And then over on liquidation, 2.6. Me personally, I know this is unpopular for some reason. I mean, I, I don't know. Some people like, they're like, no, I'm going to wait for the, for, for the new cone. You can do that. I'm just like, I don't care about your new company. I, don't, I mean, I'm sure they're great, Michael Arrington and the boys. But uh, maybe I just want to liquidate. But if I do that, and the numbers, honestly, are, I mean, it's interesting. But here's what you need to know. Total recovery percentage. If you, if you wait for the new co, and you can get new co common stock recovery percentage at 30%, initial liquid crypto distribution, 37%, you're looking at a total recovery of 68%. It's almost 70% of what you had in Celsius. That sounds awesome, right? But just remember, you're putting your faith into this new co, this new company that's coming out. As I read it, I could be wrong. Then the orderly wind down, the initial liquid crypto distribution, 44%, pretty good. 
wind down period, 7%. Wind down period of the mining business, because they have to sell that nonsense off, 10%. You're looking at 61% of total recovery. All right, now we're talking. And then lastly, we have liquidation, which is the midpoint, which is 47 point, almost half. I got to tell you, I'm quite shocked at these numbers. <laughs> I'm quite shocked at these numbers that they're actually this, this high. Uh, they're way better than Voyager's at the paltry 35% that they gave us. So, you know, this orderly Ponzi that was Celsius looks like they had a good amount to actually make things whole. And that's, what I, that's how I can see it from here. Let me know what you think about that. I'll try to get... Uh, uh, Simon and other people on to the show to discuss. I think it's very interesting. And uh, yeah, looks like uh, we're moving in the right direction. Lastly, how about some more good news? I'll take it. This was a piece from Bitcoin Archive. I think this is an old story, but I, I'm not for sure, but it is worth noting. Uh, the former PayPal president states that they're building on Bitcoin Lightning, or they're building, they're building on Bitcoin in the Lightning for the, for the, the second, layer, two, second layer solution, because it's time for the world to have a universal open protocol for payments. I thought it was interesting because, I mean, if anybody knows about payments, it's the former president of PayPal, especially electronic payments, peer to peer. And I just found it interesting that the former president of PayPal, who just left not too long ago, uh, this is, he says, Bitcoin is the answer for payments. However, we've seen, and we talked about this in a video we did uh, last week, where I talked about, actually this week, I think it was Monday, where we talked about how Elon Musk says that Bitcoin is not for payments. And he says, because, you know, I was one of the founders of PayPal, which a lot of people correct me, they go, he didn't found PayPal. He was just part of it. Just like with Tesla, he didn't found he wasn't a founder of Tesla. He just moved in after some people needed help and he pretty much took it over. I'm like, well, that's a pretty gangster move. And that is actually true. But he states, yeah, uh, Bitcoin's not the answer. I know about payments. I was in PayPal. And he says, Dogecoin is the way to go. And look, Dogecoin, we did this, this, this video in depth. And we talked about how Dogecoin over the years, you know, Dogecoin's been around since 2014 and it's been the top, the top 20 for almost its entire time that it's been out. A couple of years, it slipped to like in the 40s. But usually it's been the top 20 since 2014. So let that sink in. It's a long time for a meme coin. And I know people dismiss it and think it's a joke and da-da-da, which, you know, it's, that's what it was meant to be, quite honestly. And I still, we did the numbers. We looked at dollar cost averaging over the last two cycles, and it's pretty impressive. I'm not going to say... That's what you should buy because it's not financial advice. I can't tell you what to do. But there is one thing that concerns me, which is transaction fees. So if Elon Musk is going to say that Dogecoin is the answer for payments, okay, let's take a look at this. So this is bitinfocharts.com. And you, I'll link this in. Let me just do that. I'll link it right now so you can see what I see there. In the chats and the live chats, and I'll put it in the description as well if you're watching the, the repeat of this. You can see that there's, it's not a big deal when nobody's using Dogecoin, obviously. The same thing in Bitcoin in 20, early 2017 when I got in. No one was using Bitcoin for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. They were holding it. It was very rare. So the transaction fees are pretty low. But as soon as people started using it, transaction fees went through the roof. Now, Dogecoin is a fork of Litecoin, and Litecoin has some severely low transaction fees. So I can see the point for Litecoin. I definitely can. But look at this. So this is January 2021. The transaction fee are 23 cents. Not bad. I'll take 23 cents. Hell of a lot better than Ethereum, let's be honest. 23 cents. But then as we start to see peak action, remember around May of 2021 when everything was popping off? Now we're looking at $2.37. Well, think about it this way. If Elon Musk, which, let's just do this. The reason why everybody was so hyped up, Elon Musk, was because of just this. He put the logo of 
of Twitter, which is now X, and then the Dogecoin logo together. And people thought he's gonna use that for payments, and he can. But I'm telling you, once you start doing that, on the reach of X, and how many people are gonna use it, you think they're gonna wanna pay the transaction fee? This is just people messing around in May of 2021. It's $2.52. And you can see over time, I don't know what happened. This is an outlier. I don't know what this is, $8, I have no idea. But you can see that, you know, things go up. And if you want to think that, uh, you know, Dogecoin can be used for that, I don't know if that's going to happen. Unless Dogecoin gets a layer two solution, Doge two or something, I don't know. So when I see these things, I'm like, I don't know if that's going to work out. And I mean, Elon's a smart guy, but who knows? But I don't know. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. It's a gamble just like this whole entire industry <laughs> for, the, for almost all of it. And that's what we have for today. So look, that's the information we have. Sorry, I couldn't give you more. This is a developing story. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Now we'll go into the Q&A and I'll answer all your questions to the best of my abilities. I'm sure people are going to hate on me for the Dogecoin comments. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. Everybody needs a punching bag. Let's get into it.